we will now discuss the important minerals which are needed by our body. And we will also understand what significant role these minerals play. First, we need sodium ions. We know that these sodium ions are essential for nerve impulse conduction. In sodium potassium pumps, these sodium ions which are pumped out, they are responsible for maintaining the membrane from outside as electropositive. So one important function is in nerve impulse conduction. Second important function is sodium ions are also responsible for absorption of glucose. If you are able to recall the absorption part of the food which is digested, we said that the sodium ions are pumped out and the concentration of sodium ions increases outside the membrane. When they start moving from higher to lower concentration, they bring glucose by symport or co-transport. So, help in glucose absorption by symport or co-transport. And sodium potassium ions we know are also essential for maintaining osmotic balance. So these are important functions of sodium ions. The second mineral ion which we need are potassium ions. When we talk of again potassium ions, they are also essential for nerve impulse conduction because it is sodium potassium pump which is helping in conduction of this ionic movement. So the function is nerve impulse conduction and they are also important for maintaining the osmotic balance. In our body. The next mineral calcium. We need calcium ions for performing various functions. We can, these functions are of potassium, these are of sodium and we can write calcium functions here itself. Calcium is essential for bone and teeth formation. Calcium ions are also essential in nerve impulse conduction. Now if we are able to recall, these calcium pumps are present in presynaptic membrane. So when the impulse reaches the exon end bulb, the calcium channels they open, calcium ions diffuse in and that is where the vesicles containing neurotransmitters, they rupture releasing the neurotransmitters. So calcium plays an important role in nerve impulse conduction and we can specify by helping in release of neurotransmitters. Calcium is also essential for clotting. It is one of the clotting factor. So it is essential for blood clotting as it is a clotting factor. Calcium is also essential for the process of capacitation. In the sperms, again, the acrosome membrane becomes weaker when calcium ions are absorbed and that is when acrosome ruptures, releasing the sperm license. So, uh, it is pretty much the same function. Here, the membrane of the vesicle is weakened because of these calcium ions and it is also essential for weakening of 
the membrane of acromosome. Calcium is also essential for muscle contraction. The active sites of myosin are blocked by troponin and that troponin has a very high affinity towards calcium. So when the muscle receives the impulse from the T tubules or the sarcoplasmic reticulum, calcium ions are released and the troponin binds with the calcium ions freeing up the active site and that is where the actin myosin bridges form. Those active sites they are on the actin filament and the myosin heads head binds with it and that is how the sliding of these filaments it takes place. So these are the important functions performed by calcium. The next element that we can talk of is iron. The most important function is in transport of uh, respiratory gases because iron is an important part of hemoglobin. So we can say it is a part of hemoglobin and helps in transport of oxygen and other respiratory gases like carbon dioxide. Plus, iron is essential for redox reactions. Specifically, the ones which are the part of respiratory pathways. And there is one iron containing electron acceptor that is the cytochrome. And that cytochrome is one which is helping in this redox reaction. So as a part of cytochrome, this iron is essential. So in hemoglobin uh, uh, part that is helping in transport of respiratory gases and in pathways specifically of uh, wherever there is an electron or oxidation reduction taking place and cytochrome is an important part that is where also iron is very essential. The next element can be iodine. It is an important constituent of the hormone thyroxine. So it is for formation of thyroxine and proper functioning of thyroid gland. Functioning of thyroid gland. So that this hormone thyroxine can be produced. And thyroxine we know is also uh, an important uh, uh, hormone for regulation of carbohydrate fats and protein metabolism. So it helps in normal growth also. So in case of iodine deficiency, we know that the disease is called goiter and which affects the normal functioning of thyroid and the hormone production may either go up or less. So there is hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism. So that is all uh, mainly affected by this particular element. So after this, let us talk a few more. The next element which we need is phosphorus and phosphorus is required for many important things. Number one, it is essential for teeth and bone formation. Phosphorus is an important constituent of nucleic acids. We know that nucleic acids that is DNA and RNA, they are made up of nucleotides and each nucleotide has a pentose sugar, a phosphate that is phosphoric acid and nitrogen base. So constituent of DNA and RNA and we know this DNA and RNA are very essential. This is the genetic material and RNA is responsible for protein synthesis. If we understand the functions of all these uh, mineral elements, then assessing their uh, deficiency disorders or symptoms becomes very easy. For example, if we talk about this, 
we have understood the function that it is essential for bone and teeth formation. If phosphorus is less, bone deformities would appear. If DNA is not properly formed, we know DNA is the one which undergoes or which helps in formation mRNA by transcription and then protein synthesis. So protein if not synthesized, then all growth related things because our body, our cells are made up of proteins and phospholipids. So if proteins are not synthesized, there would be stunted growth, enzyme will not be produced in significant or sufficient quantity. So basically we are able to also conclude the deficiency signs and that is why our main focus should be on understanding the functions which a particular element performs. One more important role, it is a constituent of ATP which provides energy. So again, if phosphorus deficiency is seen, all active processes would get affected because if no phosphorus or less phosphorus, less ATP would be synthesized. And if ATP is less, all active processes would get affected. The next one is magnesium. Magnesium acts as a cofactor for many enzymes cofactor for enzymes plus it is also essential for ribosomal assembly <clears throat> essential for ribosomal assembly during protein synthesis the smaller subunit and the larger subunit of ribosome assemble only when the concentration of magnesium ion is maintained and that concentration though it is a little extra information here the concentration required is magnesium ion concentration is 0 0.001 unless and until this concentration is there the two subunits would not get assembled and if they don't get assembled, protein synthesis would not take place. The next element is zinc. Zinc is essential as an activator of two main enzymes. As activator of enzymes like carbonic anhydrase and second is in uh, alcoholic fermentation. In alcoholic fermentation when glucose is converted into ethyl alcohol the dehydrogenase enzyme which is helping in fermentation For both these, zinc plays as an activator. So without this, the enzymes would not work. And carbonic anhydrase is again very essential in uh, human body also, as well as in plants also in human body. This helps in taking in carbon dioxide in the RBC, where carbonic acid is formed, it dissociates and the chloride shift and all those things take place that we discussed in circulatory system or transport of respiratory gases and this fermentation where uh, carbohydrates are converted into ethyl alcohol. <clears throat> then other enzymes like cobalt. It is essential for formation of vitamin B12. Because vitamin B12 is cyanocobalamin. So it is a constituent of that B12. And B12 is essential for RBC production. So if cobalt is less, B12 would be less. And the function or the deficiency which would be seen would be related to RBC. Next one is manganese. It acts as a cofactor for various 
enzymes. Same is the case with molybdenum. It is also uh, a cofactor for various enzymes. So they play an important role for activating various metabolic uh, enzymes or molecules. So uh, when we talk of minerals, we have taken some very important uh, minerals here. Our focus should be to understand how these minerals help. And once we know their function, we can easily conclude the deficiency symptoms due to uh, any of these uh, minerals if they are deficient in our diet. So they also are equally important as proteins, fats and carbohydrates are. But they are required in very less quantity and they are present in pretty much the normal food that we eat. So now the next substance which remains in our list of nutrients is vitamins. So in the next segment we'll talk about water soluble and fat soluble vitamins.